At this point, you've probably heard of pods, and services, containers, replication controllers, and replica sets, but it may not be particularly clear what the order is. What is the largest of these things? What's the smallest, and how are they related to each other? And by things, we should be specific and point out that they are actually resources in the language of Kubernetes. And it turns out that the smallest of all of these is actually a pod. Now you might think, well, why is it not a container? Well, it turns out that, as we know from before, containers sit inside of pods, and you can have more than one container in a given pod. So although you're right, containers are smaller than pods, if you look at this book, you'll see that in the VM world, the atomic unit is a virtual machine. And in Docker, it's a container, but in Kubernetes, it's a pod. So how would you know that? Probably the best clue is to run a kubectl get all all namespaces o wide, which we've talked about before. Because here, you'll notice a column called name with a slash dividing something on the left and something on the right. The left is the type of resource, and on the right is its actual name. And so you see that a deploy is the resource type, and then you have the name, but the containers themselves are inside of that. And if you continue down the line, you'll see various types of resources. So you have a replica set, and you have pods, and you have deployments, and you also have replication controllers. And it turns out that replication controllers are next, and they are abbreviated as RC. So first of all, why replication controllers? Well, we know that if you have a series of pods and they're all doing roughly the same thing, then we need to distinguish between them. So you can have a number like a one and then a two and then a three. And each of these are called replicas. So you have replica one, two, and three here. So how would you see that in practice? Well, if you had a YAML file like replication.yaml, you would see the number of replicas listed here. And to give you an idea how this file works, I think it's helpful to look at the kind first, because this tells you what this file is all about. Notice that you have metadata and a specification. The specification obviously is giving you the number of re records, but it's also giving you what's called a selector. We'll talk about that later. But the interesting thing here is something called a template. So when you create a pod, you can do that in a pod.yaml. But in a replication controller, and we'll see in deployments as well, you'll have something called a template. And the template refers to the pods that will become the replicas in this YAML file. So you are saying, I have a name of engine X, and that will be the name of the pod, and it will have a label of an app with engine X. And then you have the containers inside this pod. And if you're familiar with the Docker world, here is the image that you would have given if you had Docker. Now, a selector, we've mentioned before, the way this works is you provide one. In this case, it's a name and a value pair, app and nginx. And then anything that you define in your template, so these are your pods, any pods that have a label that matches the selector will become part of whatever kind you're dealing with. So in this case, we created a pod, we'll create actually three pods with this app nginx label and the selector for the replication controller is looking for any pods that have app nginx and they get sort of attached to this replication controller. So if I were to create this series of three pods, it would look like this. You could watch it with this command. You would see pods and there are three of them and then here is a post fix to uniquely identify each of them. But it turns out that replication controllers are being replaced by replication sets in daily practice. But there's so much like a replication controller, we'll just do this. And in fact, if you look at this book, you'll see that replica sets are a new type, no longer in beta, that represent an improved version of replication controllers. And the main difference is that they can use the new set-based, and they mean replica set-based, label selectors. But to use a replica set, you first create something called a deployment. And deployments improve on the basic mechanisms of a rolling update and replication controllers. And deployments will give you blue-green deployments as well as canary deployments. Where a blue-green is essentially deploying all at once and a canary deployment is essentially deploying incrementally. And of course, the things that you are deploying are your sets of replicas, that is your sets of pods. And that means that services is our last component up here.
Now, we've talked about services in a previous video, but the idea is that you would take something like a deployment and then the service would wrap around it. So for example, if you have a master and two nodes and this pod and this pod actually work together as a single deployment, you can create a service definition that creates an IP, a DNS, and a port that will not change if your pods go down. So you might, for example, have a service that looks like this, the kind is service, metadata with a name, and then you have your specification where you again have your selector and ports that provide this sort of abstract service type that people can connect to. And the target port here refers to the ports on the pod. So in other words, that service port is really connecting to cube proxy on whichever node in that given pod. And because these pods belong to a replica set, what you're really doing is this. You're actually load balancing that backend pod one and backend pod two from the service. And that load balancing could, by the way, be on node two or node three or multiple nodes. And just to drive home this point, that load balancing is actually happening here at this level as the replica set controls these backend pods. But it's the deployment that controls which set you're currently in. So if you want to migrate from version dot one to version dot two, that's what the deployment will help you do. And remember that we said a replication set was almost the same thing as a replication controller. Here they are side by side, and you can see replication controller. Remember that it was making three replicas of a certain pod. The pod comes from a template. Here's the template. Take a look at the deployment. The deployment is creating your replica set. So everything below this, you can consider to be the replica set. The set of three, where the pods it's going to create, essentially follow the same structure as a replication controller does. So in other words, this could be one deployment. This might, for example, be dot one, and then you create another deployment, and that could be dot two. Now, in case you're wondering, why is it that I create a deployment kind, but I don't create a replica set kind? The answer is here. When you use deployments, you don't have to worry about managing the replica sets that they create. The deployments own and manage their own replica sets. So what that actually means is you may never need to manipulate a replica set object, use a deployment instead, and define your application in the spec section. In other words, if you actually created a replica set, it would look something like this. But you don't have to because when you create a deployment kind, this replica set is actually located under spec. So don't let that confuse you. It's essentially created by providing a spec section.